Hi guys, Zyga here. Welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make individual cameras for your Steam multiplayer game. So let's get started. The first step is to go into your game scene, instead of which we want to remove this main camera that was previously here. Next, inside of your player object, we need to do a couple things. The first thing is adding a new component, and in this case I'm going to call this camera controller. On the player object itself, I'm going to right click and create an empty, and I'm going to call this camera holder. And I'm going to right click camera holder and select camera. Now you can position this camera wherever you want, but I will be doing mine via the script so it doesn't really matter. Next up inside of the script I'm going to remove both of these functions and I am going to write my script that will control my camera. In my case I just wanted to follow my player with an offset. So for this I will make a reference, first of all to the game object, camera holder. This is the empty object that we created inside of our player. I will then make a new vector free and this will be known as my offset. Finally I'll make a public void update function, inside of which I'll grab my camera holder and I'll grab this transform.position and I'll make that equal our current transform.position plus the offset because we want an offset on the position. So what this basically does is we grab a camera holder which obviously holds our actual camera and we set its position to equal our player's position which is just transform.position since this script is on our main player and then we simply just add the offset. Now this is great and this would work fine in any game, however our game is multiplayer, which causes a few issues. If you were to try and run this with multiple players in your lobby or in your game, you will notice that cameras are being a little bit weird and certain players are grabbing other players' cameras rather than their own. So to make them individual, it's actually very simple. The first thing we need to do is add two new user methods. The first one will be unityengine.sceneManagement and the second one will be mirror. And just like we did with every other multiplayer script, we want to change this from a mono behavior to a network behavior. Okay, so doing that will make this a network object. However, we now need to make sure that we only use this camera if we have authority over it. Now there's different ways we can do this. However, in this case, I will have the cameras be disabled by default and only enable them if we have authority over them. Thankfully, Mirror has a function that can actually do this for us without much hassle. So I'm going to override a function called onStartAuthority and I will delete the base that is currently here. This function will basically only call itself if we have authority over the object. And as I said, if we do, we want to enable this camera. So let's do camera holder dot set active and then true. Now this is great and this script is basically finished. However, one thing you'll notice if you try and test this is we still get some weird stuff in the lobby. The reason for this is because we call this part of the code every single frame. And as you may remember, we create this object while in the lobby but we only want this part of the code to run when we're in game and not in the lobby itself. So we can actually check if we are in the right scene by using scene manager dot get active scene and then grabbing its name and check if it equals our game scene. And if that is the case, we just want to move our logic inside of here. Now this script is now finished. As you can see, mine's fairly simple, but you can make yours however complex you like. One thing to note is make sure that wherever you have your camera logic, you have this if statement wrapped around it whether that's in the update, fixed update, or even the start method. Okay, so back in Unity, I will simply drag in my camera holder, and I will set some values for the offset. In my case, I'll set this to 1, and this to about minus 4.5. Feel free to play around with these values, though. I would have nearly forgotten, on your player object, make sure to select the camera holder and disable it, and then save that. And now, in play mode, we can host a game, press ready up, start the game, and as you can see, we have a camera following the player. And if I was to test this with another player, you'll notice that my camera only follows my local player and not the pink player over here. So that is it for this tutorial. If you'd like to have access to this source code or any of my other tutorial source code, there is a link down below to my Patreon. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you guys later. Bye!